Dr. Pinto, the floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. Hopefully everybody had that good, strong cup of coffee and is ready to go here. Uh, before I open it up for questions, I just want to make a few uh, brief remarks. Uh, yesterday, as, uh, as you probably know, was my first day here. This was a terrific feeling to pull up and park uh, uh, back on the campus and then have an opportunity uh, yesterday uh, to, through the day to walk across campus and reconnect. Uh, so, uh, you know, you imagine the pleasure before you get here, but then when you really experience it, it's just at a completely different level. So it was uh, terrific to shake hands with some students and meet some fellow former faculty colleagues and staff members who I've worked with just accidentally on campus. Uh, it was a busy day yesterday as well. I got started, I rolled up my sleeves, uh, started work, uh, very excited. Uh, I had made some comments during the, the uh, uh, announcement of, of my appointment. Uh, my excitement has redoubled and uh, hopefully my energy is at that level as well. I know it is, but uh, I'm ready to, to move forward. Uh, before I, before I uh, open it up for question, there's two things I want to do. Um, one is I want to sort of reaffirm what I had suspected when I was going through the interview process. This is a university on the move. Uh, it is a university that is student-centered. It is driven by our faculty. It is very proud to be located in the city of Cincinnati. It, uh, it's a global university but definitely with a heart in this region and in this city. And that connection is very real. So as we aspire to our global research aspirations, we will make sure that that connection stays solid. And so um, I, when I talked about rolling up my sleeves to, to move forward, it's about connecting with all of the talent that's on campus and all of the stakeholders that we have off campus and coming together to define a vision that will move us forward in education, research, and service to our community. Uh, I also want to thank uh, the UC community and the Board of Trustees uh, for putting their faith in me. Uh, I am honored, as you know, by this appointment and look forward to living up uh, to their expectations. All right, now comes the interesting part, so we'll, I'll open it up for, for questions. Yes. Uh, could you identify yourself so I start to... Sure. Uh, Chris is Willie with WCPL, Channel 9. Nice to meet you, Christine. Um, nice to meet you, too, Fred Pinto. Uh, you have a groundbreaking for the new health science building tomorrow. We have yeah. an extensive background in the sciences. Is this indicative of what we're going to see throughout your tenure? And what are you looking forward to? Yeah. To you know, when I was here, uh, I uh, lived through the, the phase of the transformation of our campus. And uh, you see, as uh, some of you may know, some of you are not old enough, I think, to remember that was, was abbreviated. Uh, the abbreviation was interpreted as being under construction. And uh, we have seen the benefits of that uh, when we come to this campus. And even as I was away from this campus, just very <coughs> random people in academia would, you know, when I told them, well, I was at UC, they would talk about, wow, have you, you, know, have you seen that campus recently? So this is part of that student-centered focus and research focus. It's about having an infrastructure that supports this. And as you know, our health sciences campus is a very, very important part of uh, our university. And so the investment in the infrastructure there is what you're seeing. Yes? And I know one of the things you mentioned you want to do um, was to grow the student body. But yeah. that's a tough task because it's been growing steadily in the, over the last few right. years. So how do you plan to continue that along with yeah. the infrastructure? So, uh, you know, we don't do growth, and that's one of the things I've learned here. We don't do growth for the sake of growth. It's, again, about advancing our mission as a university. And uh, one, of our, one of our missions is to educate our populace, particularly the folks in our city, the folks in our state, and the folks in our nation. As we become nationally recognized, that is becoming more and more the case. So when we're thinking about uh, our enrollment, it's really finding an enrollment that is optimal in delivering our mission at, at the highest possible quality. And so that's what it's about. So we don't really look at a growth objective by itself. And, and, you, and your name, please? Barry Scheibel, Barry, nice to meet you. 
Good morning, President Dittel. Yeah. Robert Lauder on Fox 19. Robert. What do you see as your biggest challenge, your biggest obstacle as you hit the ground running in your first uh, few weeks, months in office? I see everything as opportunities now. I've always seen it as opportunities. You know, for me, it's about the excitement and the privilege of being in this really important sector of our society, which is higher education and knowledge discovery. So to me, you know, I've been in administration long enough. It's, it's as important to stay away from a mindset that is sort of bogged down by the problems and the issues of the day but really to look at the possibilities in the long range. That doesn't mean we don't take care of our operations on a regular basis, but we keep them in perspective. So, you know, we, we, we come up against various challenges. You know, one of the things, and I don't see it as really a problem, but many interpret it as a problem. You know, this whole question that we have nationally, it's not just at UC, about uh, the cost of higher education. Is it affordable to our citizens? That's a very, very important question. But if you see it as something weighing down on you, that's a different approach from looking at it positively and saying, you know, this is about being student-centered. This is about enabling faculty to teach at the highest possible uh, level of quality, uh, but at the same time, ensuring that we as administrators and university leaders uh, are operating this campus at its most efficient. And so that's how we look at the, at the, at the challenge. Good morning to you. My name is Alexis Rodney. Good morning, Alexis. Um, a couple questions for you. One, you said that your whole family are beer cats. Yes, kind of they are. Explain. I think your son's a senior, right? Is he planning on coming here? He's a senior at high school. He's uh, he's got he's done very well. I'm very proud of him. Uh, he's going to uh, be an engineer. I hope uh, he certainly uh, has shown more of a tendency to be. Uh, uh, a good engineer than I did at his age, so you know I think he's going to be a far better engineer than I ever was. Uh, the downside is he wants to pick mechanical over chemical. I'll never understand that, but mechanical is a pretty good field. Uh, so he has a lot of choices, and actually, well before uh, I had uh, I had applied for this uh, job, or even this was even on the radar, he had already applied to UC. Uh, now, I'm not going to put any pressure on him, and so <laughs> it's his choice. Uh, his, his dad's choices don't determine his choice, but he's been very graciously accepted to the University of Cincinnati, so it's one in the list of schools that he will consider. Uh, and so I hope that he will attend, but it's his choice. He's, uh, he's going to make that choice. And I, we've been, my wife and I have been very, uh, have been very particular about ensuring that our, our children decide what they believe is the most exciting opportunity for them. But he is very much a Bearcat. That will never change. His support of athletics has just been incredible. And he keeps me updated on all the scores and has for the past five years. <laughs> he knows the schedules. He knows all the players in every sport. So it's, uh, it's terrific. And so, does my, so do my other children, by the way. But he has sort of risen to the top because his, of his nickname, as you see, uh, in, in Kentucky. So. <laughs> And just yes. a question, you talked about staying engaged with the student body, um, and I know former President Santa Ono was big on Twitter. So you've already done that, you've been in contact with the students, is that something you plan to continue? Uh, yes, uh, you know, to the, to the extent that it, uh, it uh, works in engaging me to the students. So, you know, uh, I worked with uh, Dr. Ono, I worked with Santa uh, for a year, actually, when he was provost and I was uh, vice provost at that time had the pleasure of working with him. Uh, we both have a common interest in, uh, in, in had a common interest in engaging in the students. You know, as you would expect, our styles are different. Uh, so I think you can probably uh, look to and perhaps uh, uh, start to observe a different style uh, in my engagement from that of his. But certainly, social media is the way young people uh, connect, and it's very important for us to reach out to them in that way. And it's a very effective tool. I have to say that one of the things, so I'm going off in a, in, in a slightly different direction, but you know, one of the challenges, certainly we've all enjoyed the benefits of social media, keeping up with family who may be far away, and you know, our worlds have just changed. It's just connected us so effectively. But from my sort of professional responsibility, I have to ask sort of the bigger question. In their professional lives in the future, how is social media going to affect these students? And I don't mean keeping in touch with grandma or keeping in touch with uh, their brothers and sisters. That's, of course, we know how that all works. 
This is more about uh, their professions. How are teams going to work on projects in the future when they're in industry? Social media is going to be a big part of that. So starting that thinking or continuing that thinking in our faculty with respect to their responsibility to educate our students for, <coughs> for their careers is going to be an important part of the way we look at social media. There's something facets to your job. Um, and obviously, you talked about some of the changes that we can see, and I know that a couple of us have asked about that. But if you had to put it in a nutshell, I mean, what is the first and largest change that we're going to see, especially with you being the new leader? Yeah. It's very tempting to come up here and give you a list of changes. I have learned that in, in leadership you don't do that. <laughs> it's actually very important. And I've been, I was here for 26 years, as you know. And it's tempting to think that I know everything about the place. Uh, I know a whole lot about its culture, and that's why I'm back, because I like it so much. Um, but a lot has changed you'll be surprised. And, you know, you've been here probably for all these years and you haven't sort of observed the changes I have. And a lot of change here. And uh, I need to catch up with that. I need to, le to learn about the change. I also need to listen to folks across campus. And from that, figure out what is the collective priority to move forward. And so that will be my task over the next few months. In fact, I sent a letter out to the UC community yesterday that said just that. And uh, so this first phase, the most important thing for me is to listen, to learn, and then to come to some conclusions on what I believe are the highest priorities for this institution, and then to make some decisions and move forward. Uh, uh, and then I believe I will have, uh, all of us will be pulling in the same direction. And then our chances of success, I think, are strong. Any other questions? Great. Thank you all for being here this morning. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. And I look forward to getting to know each of you better as we, as we uh, work uh, on our ta important task here at the university.